In this lesson, you will place air terminals in the ceiling of a room, modify air terminal parameters, and work with the airflow schedule. Click the menu browser and select Open. And from the Training Files Imperial Mechanical Systems folder, open the file RME Mech Air Systems 01. With the current view, as Level 2 HVAC Ceiling, open the Schedule view, space Airflow Schedule, and then click the View tab and tile the windows. Then click inside the Ceiling view and zoom in to its upper left corner. Then click inside the Schedule view and scroll down and select Space 223. Notice that the space is highlighted in the plan view as well. And also take note of the actual supply airflow value. And then click inside the ceiling plan. Then click the Home tab. And from the HVAC panel, click Air Terminal. Then take note of the current element type, which is a supply diffuser. And on the placement panel, click Place on face. Then place the supply diffuser at the location shown. Then click modify and select the diffuser and on the options bar for flow change the CFM to 425. The schedule then updates. With the diffuser still selected from the modify panel Click Copy, and on the Options bar, make sure that Constraint is cleared, and select Multiple. Then, click the upper left corner of the diffuser, move your cursor down, and type 12, and Enter. Move your cursor further down, and type 12, and Enter again. And then, place two additional copies as shown and press Escape. Next, to tag the diffusers, click the Annotate tab, and from the Tag panel, click Tag by Category. Then, on the Options bar, Clear Leader, and select one of the diffusers. In the Alert dialog, click Yes, and load the diffuser tag from the Training Files Imperial Mechanical Systems folder. Then select each of the five diffusers to tag them and press Escape. Notice all the values in the schedule for that space. Next, to place return diffusers, click the Home tab and from the HVAC panel, click Air Terminal and click the Change Element Type drop down and select Work Plane Based return diffuser and on the placement tab click place on face then place two diffusers as shown then click modify and we now need to edit the diffuser family in order to align the edges to the ceiling grid lines select one of the return diffusers and from the family panel click edit family in the Revit dialog, click Yes. And in the Project Browser, expand Views, Floor Plans, and double-click Ref Level. Select the symbolic lines shown using the Control key. Then click Instance Properties. And for Reference, select Strong Reference and click OK. Then click Load into Project. And in the Family Already Exists dialog, click Overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. Then zoom in to the Return Diffuser at the bottom left of the lounge. And from the Modify tab, click Align. Then select the vertical grid line shown, followed by the right edge of the diffuser. Then Select the horizontal grid line shown, followed by the top edge of the diffuser. 
Then, using the same method, align the other return diffuser, as shown. And then, press Escape twice. Next, to modify the airflow display arrows, select the return diffuser and click Element Properties. Then, clear right arrow and down arrow and click OK. Then, select the return diffuser at the lower left. Then, go to its Element Properties and clear left arrow. Then, close both files without saving any changes as the next lesson will provide its own training file. And that concludes this lesson. In this lesson, you will place air terminals in a room that does not have a dropped ceiling. Click the menu browser and select Open. And from the Training Files Imperial Mechanical Systems folder, open the file RME Mech Air Systems 02. Then open the view Level 1 HVAC Plan Design and change the view scale to an eighth of an inch equals a foot. And zoom in to the lower left corner of the building. Then, from the View Tabs Windows panel, click Close Hidden, and then open the Schedule View, Space Airflow Schedule, and then go back to the View tab and click Tile Windows. Then, make the Floor Plan active, and from the Home tab, click Air Terminal. Then, click Change Element Type, and select 24 by 24 8 neck and place the air terminal in the space as shown and click modify then select the diffuser and go to its instance properties and for offset enter 8 feet and change the flow to 360 CFM and click OK with the diffuser still selected, click Copy and copy it down 20 feet. Then select both diffusers using the control key and copy them both 14 feet to the right. Then click the Annotate tab and from the Tag panel click Tag by Category and on the options bar, clear leader and select each of the untagged diffusers and press escape. Next, let's create an embedded schedule. Double click the title bar of the space airflow schedule to maximize it and then right click in the schedule and click view properties. Then for embedded schedule, Click Edit, and in the Schedule Properties dialog, on the Embedded Schedule tab, click the Embedded Schedule checkbox. In the list of categories, with Air Terminals selected, click Embedded Schedule Properties. Then, under Available Fields, double-click System Type, Type Mark, and Flow. Then, on the Sorting and Grouping tab, for Sort By, select Mark, and click OK to close all dialogs. Next, let's modify an airflow value in the schedule. Tile the windows again. Then, in the Schedule, under Space 115, select SD. 112, 110, and change the flow to 450 CFM. 
then using the same method change the flow for 111 and 112 to 330 now the airflow data value for the space updates to a positive number next we'll place air handling equipment close the schedule and maximize the floor plan view then select the zone to west area t and go to its instance properties and under energy analysis verify that the calculated heating load value is 33807 and the calculated cooling load value is 3.9 ton which is approximately 1.5 times the heating load then click OK then click the home tab and from the mechanical panel click mechanical equipment then click the change element type drop down and select 4 tons then zoom to the double door for space 115 then press the space bar twice to change the rotation of the pump so that the supply faces the space and the return faces away from the space and click to select an insertion point so that the supply is at the approximate center of the doorway then press escape and select the heat pump and go to its instance properties in the instance properties dialog change the offset to 9 feet and click OK then clear the selection and close the file without saving it as the next lesson will provide its own training file and that concludes this lesson In this lesson, you will create low-pressure secondary supply air systems. A Revit MEP system is the logical connection between system components, such as air terminals and mechanical equipment. This logical connection allows Revit MEP to perform various analysis, including energy analysis. You create air systems by placing air terminals and mechanical equipment. You then create logical connection between the system components. After creating the logical connection, you then create ductwork to physically connect the system components. This workflow is the Revit MEP recommended best practice for systems creation. In this lesson, you'll also use the system browser to validate systems. It's important to note here that Unlike logical connections, physical connections like ductwork are not required for systems designing. However, they are necessary to perform calculations such as sizing that reference the physical geometry. Click the menu browser and select Open. And from the Training Files Imperial Mechanical Systems folder, open the file RME Mech. Air Systems 03. Zoom in to the upper left of the building and from the Analyze tab click System Browser. Drag the System Browser to the bottom of the screen so that it displays horizontally below the floor plan. Then select the Supply Diffuser at the upper left of the space. Then from the Create panel, click Supply. From the System Tools panel, click Edit System. Then, with the Add to System tool highlighted, select the three supply diffusers shown. Then, down in the System Browser, expand Mechanical, Supply Air, Mechanical Supply Air 1. Then, from the Edit Duct System panel, click System Properties. Review the number of elements, system name, and flow value, which is the sum of 
the flow values for the four different diffusers you added to the system. Click Cancel, and from the Edit Duct System panel, click Add to System, and select the last supplied diffuser in the space. Then, go back to System Properties, and take note of the updated flow value. Click Cancel, and then click Select Equipment, and select the heat pump located outside the space. When you do, notice that the organization of the mechanical folder in the system browser has now changed so that the heat pump is the parent, the air terminals are the children, and the system connects them. Next, we will rename the system to match the identifying data or mark of the equipment properties which updates the name in the system browser. On the Edit Duct System panel, click Equipment Properties. In the Instance Properties dialog, under Identity Data, for Mark, highlight the value and press Ctrl-C to copy it. Then click OK and click System Properties. Highlight the value for system name and press Control v to paste over the selection and click OK. Then in the system browser under Supply Air expand WSHP and WSHP 245 is now the name of the system. Click Finish Editing System. Then close the file without saving it as the next lesson will provide its own training file, and that concludes this lesson. In this lesson, you will create ductwork to physically connect system components. This workflow is Revit MEP recommended best practice for systems creation. Click the menu browser and select Open, and from the training files Imperial Mechanical Systems folder. Open the file RME Mech Air Systems 04. Zoom in to the space in the upper left corner. Display the system browser and select the upper left diffuser and from the layout panel click Generate Layout. On the option bar you can click the Next Solution and Previous Solution buttons to scroll through available solutions. Display Solution 1 and click Settings. In the Duct Conversion Settings dialog, for Main, for Duct Type, select Rectangular Duct, Mitered Elbows and Tees. For Offset, Type 9 feet 10 and a half inches. Then select branch and for duct type select rectangular duct mitered elbows and tees. For offset type 9 feet 10 and a half inches. For flex duct type select flex duct round and for maximum flex duct length, enter 3 feet and click OK. Then click Modify and select a vertical segment of the main duct and drag it just to the left of the light fixtures. Be careful not to drag the main duct too close to the diffusers. If there's not enough room for the software to create the necessary fittings, you'll get an error in a later step. Click Finish Layout. Notice that the ductwork is not listed in the system browser because the ductwork is a physical and not a logical connection and therefore it's not part of the system. You can delete ductwork and the system remains. Place your cursor over a segment of the main duct and press tab twice to highlight the entire system 
and click to select it. Then click the Analyze tab and from the Color Schemes panel, click Duct Legend. Then click to the right of the system to place the legend and for Color Scheme, select Duct Color Fill Flow and click OK. Then select the legend and click the Element Properties drop-down and select Type Properties. For Values Displayed, select By View and click OK. Then from the Scheme panel, click Edit Scheme. In the Edit Color Scheme dialog, select Duct Color Fill Velocity. You can use this color scheme as a visual reference to confirm that air is flowing through the system ductwork at the appropriate velocity. Click OK and then clear the selection. Then place your cursor on a segment of the duct and then press tab three times to highlight the entire system including the heat pump and then click to select it. Then click duct slash pipe sizing. In the duct sizing dialog under sizing method with friction selected change the value to 0 0.08 and then select only. Under constraints for branch sizing select calculated size only and then select restrict height and select 16 inches. Then click OK. Next, select one of the ducts in the supply air system and click System Inspector. Then click Inspect and move the cursor over the system components. You can use the information that displays flow, static pressure, and pressure loss to find efficiencies in the system so that you can modify the system design accordingly. Remember that all information is color-coded according to pressure. Red information and arrows indicate the highest percentage of pressure loss due to friction, also known as critical path. When finished, click Finish. Then close the file without saving any changes as the next lesson will provide its own training file and that concludes this lesson. In this lesson you will modify existing ductwork and then use the connect into tool to connect components to the existing air system. You will also convert rigid duct into specified lengths of flex duct. Click the menu browser and select open and from the training files imperial mechanical systems folder open the file rme mech air systems 05. If the system browser is open close it and zoom in to the lower left corner of the building. Select the heat pump and right click the supply air connector, the connector facing the room's double doors and click draw duct. Click the change element type drop down and select mitered elbows beveled tabs. Press the space bar to make the new duct match the heat pump duct size and location. Then click midway between the top two light fixtures. Then move your cursor down and click a point just below the lowest set of diffusers. Then press escape twice to end the command. To begin branch duct, select the top right diffuser, right click the connector grip and click draw duct. Then click change element type and select mitered elbows and taps and on the options bar for offset select 9 feet 
10 and a half inches. Then click the intersection of the branch duct and the main duct. Then click modify. Then in the project browser under MEP design 3D views, double click level 1 3D MEP. Then on the view cube, click the top southwest corner. Then zoom into the lower left corner of the building. Then tile the windows by using WT so that you can view results in 3D as you add duct in 2D. Make the floor plan view active and select the top unconnected supply diffuser. Then click connect into and then select the main supply duct. Using the same method, connect the remaining diffusers to the main duct. Next, from the Home tab's HVAC panel, click Convert to Flex Duct and select the top left diffuser. When you do, a portion of the rigid ductwork is converted to Flex Duct. Select the remaining diffusers. Then press Escape. Next, from the HVAC panel, click Duct Fitting. Then click Change Element Type and select Rectangular End Cap Standard. Click the Endpoint Snap of the main duct and press Escape twice. Next, click the Modify tab and from the Edit panel, click Split. Then click on the main duct below the top set of diffusers as shown. Click Modify. Then place your cursor on a section of the main duct and press Tab to highlight the entire main duct run and click to select it. Then click Duct Pipe Sizing and make sure that Restrict Height is cleared and click OK. When you do, the ductwork is sized to provide appropriate CFM value for the system. The height constraint is used when you place duct in a restricted space, such as a plenum. Close the file without saving it, as the next lesson will provide its own training file. And that concludes this lesson.